Mr. Glacier are going to change the world. The story is about two people, Amelia Wren and, and James Glacier, who go up in a gas balloon and go on an adventure of survival. On one hand, you have Amelia Wren, who has been one of the great aeronauts of her day, and yet she is an, a social outcast in that time. Women don't belong in balloons, and she makes such a show of herself. <laughs> And then you have uh, James Glacier. He is a young, passionate meteorologist having to fight for respect. You'll get your chance, you know. They'll realise your worth. I think they know my worth quite well enough. What I always loved about the film and the journey that the characters go on is a sense of adventure and wonder. And so it begins. It's a story of human achievement. These people are incredibly frail passengers at war with the sky. I think the balloon itself is its own metaphor. Even though it's gigantic to us, to the skies, it's nothing. It's a film that is very modern in the sense that there's a huge amount of visual effects which are going to be 50% of the film, but it's rooted in character and some fantastic scenes written by Jack Thorne that are just an absolute pleasure to play. We need to go down now. No, 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 we're not descending, not yet. What have we to lose? Our lives. This could be more important than our lives. It's going to be a spectacular, edge of your seat, white knuckle ride into the skies. It's a film that is about hope, about the feeling that anything is possible. We live in a time in which we are being almost encouraged and forced to look down, to look inward. And this is a story about dreaming to look upwards. There is an extraordinary wonder and formidable freedom up there in the sky when you're in a balloon, but you're always subservient to nature. Up there, it's where I found the greatest happiness. Hey Lisa here with a bonus movie fact during the early years of the Academy Awards, the organisation provided newspapers with the names in advance, with the agreement that they would not publish the names until 11pm. Of course, then someone had to ruin it for everyone when the Los Angeles Times broke this rule in 1940, announcing that Gone with the Wind had won before the statue had even been handed out. It led to a rule change that stands today. Do you like my shirt? You can get one for yourself in the link in the description.